Well, hello everyone, welcome. Welcome to Playframe, and welcome to Guild Saga, Vanished Worlds. This is a sponsored episode brought to you by the folks at Ocelot, who'd like you to know that this game is out now, available on Steam. I've got a link in the description down below if you want to go check it out for yourself. If you would like to see more of the game first, I am here to help with that. So, this game, if you are not familiar with it, is a turn-based tactical RPG, kind of in the spirit of, like, inspired by the isometric classic RPGs of old. As soon as you start seeing gameplay, you will know the ones. Uh, and it's quite neat and quite pretty. So like, uh, if that kind of game is your speed, I think that this one might be worth looking into. Let's get a new game started here. Uh, we've got a normal mode, presents a journey where the challenges of combat are matched by the unfolding of the story. Ideal for players who seek an engaging gameplay experience without missing out on narrative and exploration. I appreciate that they do also have the story mode in case the combat difficulty is not the thing you're looking for and you just want the narrative aspect, but we'll do normal so you can see what the default experience looks like and new game. First things first, we will have to make our character. And this is a whole big process, as is traditional for this kind of RPG. I'm going to try to speed through this somewhat quickly, just so I can show you more game here. This, this video can't be forever long. Um, let's see. But what if I just hit randomize Stanley? That's a fine enough to start. Uh, let's see. Quite a lot of variety you can get here. Fully customizable, this uh, main character. Can choose your race, your hairstyle from quite a few, hair color, eye color, clothing, and this is actually like changing your gear with stats and such, so not just entirely cosmetic. You'll probably want to pay attention to some of that uh, <laughs> pop-up text, depending on what you're uh, going for here. Also your weapon, again, also determining how this character will play, but there is a lot of customization in terms of like abilities, and you know, I'll show more of it in a second. Well, let's get a character figured out here first. Um, that's a heck of a name. Um, Keith Lovelace. Um, I'm loving the range of names here, both from the sort of like vanilla and standard to sort of silly sounding like Crispin and Jumbo Jeb. <laughs> uh, Endy is fine. Okay. Uh, and let's see. Get that off screen for a bit here, and shuffle a few times. Who looks like a fun, compelling lead for us here today? You look perfect. Uh, do I want, let's see, a rogue cloak with rod of flame seems like a potential mismatch, but uh, let's see. Options include warrior's light plate, archer's hunting garb, mage's cloth robes. Rogue could be fun. I don't know if the rod of flames is the... Uh, Weapon we're going to want to go for. Sure, dual steel daggers. Love it. This seems nice and roguey. So this is just appearance, though. Beyond that, there is backstory, which influences a variety of things. You could be an industrialist, legionnaire, academic, vagabond, brute, disciple. Quite a lot of backgrounds and backstories that also give you a little bit of a boost in a particular skill. Engineer actually seems like a kind of fun one. Engineer rogue seems like a fun combo that I'm going to try to go for here. Let's see if we can make it work. You can choose your inclination. Altruistic, ambitious, curious, degenerate, devout, greed. Basically just your motivation. I'm going to, let's say curious. Curious is fine. Now we determine attributes, and this starts out quite simple. Choose one of these to put a point in. <laughs> and that's all you need. You got strength, representing your physical might. Uh, this will increase damage dealt with skills that require one-handed swords, maces, or axes. Meant for warriors, doesn't really seem like it would help me that much. Dexterity better for rogues and hunters, helps with dual-wielded weapons and bows. That's me. And intelligence, uh, mental acuity and aptitude for magic. Good for lots of kinds of mage. Dexterity seems like the one to put a point in. At least starting out. Secondary attributes, though, like initiative, represents your swiftness to act. Allocating points to this will increase the likelihood that you will act first in battle, allowing you to dictate the flow of combat. Constitution represents your physical fortitude. Allocating points to this will increase your maximum health. As the character grows in level, so will the amount of health gained through constitution. Useful. Or memory, representing your capacity to retain information in the heat of battle. By allocating points to this, they'll be able to equip more skills to be used in battle. Let's... 
If we're leaning all in on the sort of rogue engineer thing, I love the initiative choice. Let's go with it. Combat wise. Now, we need to choose a combat thing. And dual wielding really seems like the thing I kind of already chose here, though I do love that you got the flexibility to really make, like, we're not just deciding on a class up front, like one of 10 classes or whatever, and then just kind of fine tuning some specific settings. You can really just make a very, very custom, <laughs> custom build here if you want. Uh, but let's, let's emphasize a few particular strengths, two particular strengths, specifically the daggers in my case. Schools. Now we get to choose two of these different schools and like disciplines of skill. Lots of them magical, but not all. Pyromancer, Hydromancer, Geomancer, uh, Warrior, Hunter, Rogue, Cleric, Engineer, and Warlock. That seems like... I'm curious what would happen if I put like two points in Rogue or whatever, but I like this combo since this is exactly what I was sort of thinking up front. A Rogue Melee damage school with efficient physical attacks, evasive and critical hit ability, and skills that allow you to quickly maneuver around the battlefield. And an engineer. A utility school with a range of unique skills that provide various buffs, debuffs, or deploy contraptions that allies can use. That seems fun. Love it. All right. Down to the last couple here. Abilities, starting with skills. So, our two schools, I believe, that we've chosen uh, have now given us access to a handful of abilities that we could add to our character here. Uh, five for each. We need to choose three in total. So, let's, um, choose carefully. We've got Execute. Deal lethal damage to an enemy, killing them if they have 20% or less health remaining. This skill can backstab. Uh, and Venom. Grant your weapon additional poison damage for three turns. Uh, Flank. Move to a nearby unoccupied tile. And you can see, kind of, uh, at the bottom of these skill descriptions, the number of turns... Uh, that this skill has a, for like a cooldown for how long you'd have to wait before you could use it again and the max range. Useful information. Haste heightens your reflexes and movement speed for three turns. Impale deal damage to an enemy's health directly by bypassing their armor can backstab. That seems also quite useful. But then there's the engineering ones like deploy portals. Place two single-use connecting portals on the battlefield. Any character can use them. That seems very cool. But also like I might that seems like that would get very, very handy if you know what you're doing and then be a great way to achieve so little if you don't. <laughs> Summon Gearwork Cannon. Conjure a controllable chemist's gearwork cannon to assist in combat. I can tell already that's one I want because that seems fun. Spatial Displacer. Move an object or summon on the battlefield to an unoccupied location. That also seems potentially fun. That seems like a good shenanigans option. Sight Scope. Grant a party member a vision enhancing augment. Neat. Or Nail Bomb. Launch a deadly nail bomb at an enemy. Do a bunch of damage and set them bleeding. Resisted by armor, though. I think I want... I should get a like actual dual blade skill here, or rogue skill, whichever it is. Probably a rogue skill. Um, it is tough, though. I like flank in terms of just like mobility options, but... Having a very strong hit that can backstab and whatnot. Also seems real fun. Hmm. I'll take... You know what? I will drop the spatial displacer. I'm sure that'd be fun too, but let's let's go with like these two. Yeah. Okay. And finally, talents. We can choose one. Uh elusive, which gives us plus 10% evasion, uh plus 20% accuracy, minus 20% critical strike chance, plus 3 inspire. Increased chances of mining additional ore and finding rare gemstones, 50% chance to recover special arrows, which we don't have. Intimidate, plus three. Walking speed, plus 20%. Communicate with spirits. That could be an interesting one. Uh, more strength when health is low. More intellect. Increase your luck while looting. Hmm. I like this. I mean, I, li I like a lot of things here, but this one seems good for me. Okay. Our character is created. Huzzah. Let us begin. And here we are. 
So, you can see my skills down here, some default ones uh, that we have out the gate, like dash, uh, turn for kind of like choosing the direction you're facing, lacerate, sort of like our default uh, dual weapon attack skill, strike the target enemy with both daggers, can backstab, two to four physical damage times two, set bleeding for one turn, resisted by armor. Okay, cool, nice. And our three skills that we specifically chose. Fantastic. A barrel filled with freshly caught fish. You are not sure who the fisherman was. Lots to investigate, but again, let's move somewhat quick here so I can actually show off as much game as possible in the span of a single video. Um, hi. Hey, India. How's the voyage treating you so far? Um... You know me, and this feels rude, but, um... I'm sorry, but who are you? Oh, right, we haven't had a proper introduction yet, have we? I'm Asuka, from the Forests of Mir. Um, why are you on the ship? So the High Custodian picked me for your expedition to the Mythshade Isles. It's my first mission with the Guild, and, well... Let's say the butterflies are real. I can't imagine how you're feeling. First expedition, and you're already leading the charge. Hmm, leadership is in my blood. I wouldn't accept anything less. No, I am pretty new to all this, so honestly, I'm feeling a bit scared. Oh, that's perfectly natural. If I'm being honest, I'm terrified too. I really appreciate you being up front with me. Um, well, I've... I, I need to be on my way. The storm's getting worse, India. We should go inside. I might do in a minute, though there's more people, like historian Theuda. Ah, you must be India. A strange storm, indeed. Not recorded in these parts. Quite unsettling. Um, who are you? Theudia, historian of the Heroes Guild. I'm thrilled to join your expedition into the Myths Shade Isles. What stories we'll uncover together? Um, what's your role? My role? I'm the historian who travels with the Heroes Guild, documenting every moment, every decision for our records. And, of course, I'm here to offer my expertise whenever it's needed. But this, this is something new. Never before have I joined an expedition led by someone so fresh to the Guild. It's history in the making. You must have truly impressed the High Custodian for her to put you in charge. I'd ventured through most lands of the Great Houses, but none are as veiled in mystery with so few records as the Mistshade Isles. Well, as much as I would love to talk more, again, we got got to squeeze in as much as we can. So, um... Iron Fist Arter. Hello. Storm's brewing. Hold fast, or the sea will take what's left of you. Okay. Uh... Anyone else I should chat? You look important. Let's chat with you. Yes, India. How may I assist you? Who are you? Lucate Dawnguard. I'm here as part of your expedition to the Mistshade Isles, sent by the High Custodian of the Heroes Guild. My blade is yours to command. I'll uphold my duty with honor. I see you are reviewing navigation charts. Can you show me where we are right now? Lucate taps a spot on the chart with precision. Here, just east of Respite Island. The last known stronghold of House Mazan within the Andra. I don't know what most of that is, but, um, how, how, are we there yet? Three days at sea, hugging the southern shores of respite before we break west into open waters. With any luck, we'll avoid the storms, and anything worse that might be lurking. Sounds good. Um, what can you tell me about- actually, no, I'm good. That's all for now, thanks. You should probably get some rest below deck while you can, India. Maybe I- well, I'm curious about you first, hang on. This is no ordinary storm. There's a darkness in the air. Something sinister that stirs beneath the waves. Um... What makes the storm unusual? The storm reeks of something far beyond nature's whim. Even without the instincts of a sailor, I can feel the dark magic woven into its very fabric. The air crackles with unnatural energy. The clouds gather as if summoned by a malevolent will. This is no mere squall. It is a force, shaped by hands unseen, perhaps to deter us, or worse, to draw us in. Such storms do not arise without reason, and whatever conjured it does not intend for us to pass through unscathed. You're scaring me, I'm going to go. Tread carefully, young hero, for the sea holds many secrets, not all are friendly. In my experience, very few sea secrets are friendly. Um, oh, I choose to sleep. Turn in for the night. You won't be able to converse with your fellow travelers after this point. Normally, if I was, like, doing a full playthrough of the game, yeah, I'd be checking in with everybody. As you do, but I'm tired, you see.
You close your eyes. As you begin to fall asleep, you feel yourself being pulled into a mysterious void. Oh. Um. A fallen foot soldier lay lifelessly against a stack of barrels, his armor painted by soot and despair. You good? Hang on. A bloodied, faceless corpse sprawled on the floor, baked by flames. A nauseating stench. They've got silver, though. I will loot. They're not using it. Andia, you're just in time! You can still stop the Megas Temporalis, but her- ah! I didn't catch the end of that. Um... The priest who some- I don't know why it's in the bottom corner there. The priest who somehow knew your name. Whatever remains of him, anyway. Um... A raging inferno blocks this path. You should find another way to the town center. You know, I agree, Tooltip. You've given me good advice. This is it for me. May the gods have mercy on us all. C Captain, no! Whatever I'm doing here, I don't feel like I'm helping very much. Um, a soldier's lifeless body. Hello? An abandoned alchemist's cart. Which is empty. Bummer. He's turned against us, Endia. The echoes of his betrayal ripple through time. The true darkness stirs, its hunger unending. What lies ahead may be bound in shadow already. But the sands of time are still in motion, flowing with each breath. The path remains unfixed, with the past and the future waiting for a hand to shape them. Our friends, our world, Endia all stand at the precipice. If we tread the same ground again, we may lose everything. Anyway, bye. I'm in danger, I think, but that looks very cool. If I gotta be in danger, it should at the very least look cool. It's your turn! We're fighting now. While it's your turn, you can move or cast a skill. We got our movement points, the gold ones, and our action points, the silver ones. And I like this I like this design choice for sort of like the classic RPG. Like, a lot of the games that are clearly sort of like the big early inspirations for this, kind of the old Baldur's Gates and whatnot, a lot of them had more of a kind of like possible real-time combat system where you could like, combat took place in real time but you could pause and deliver orders and I was never really a fan of that just because it it was very unwieldy and it descended into chaos very quickly. It didn't feel like it captured the like strategic element that like D&D &D and tabletop uh, RPGs tend to do and more modern uh, often like Larian designed tactical RPGs and like isometric RPGs like this have embraced more of this sort of like action points turn-based type thing which is I think a much better fit and I really enjoy way more so I'm glad they've taken this route um what are you another shadow can I get behind you perhaps if I flanked you can I kaboom yeah and then I could use, and you can see in the top right of the tooltip here how many action points the skill will take. I had however many total. What did this take? This took one. So I had four total before. I'm down to three. I could use those to summon a gearwork cannon or use two of them to lacerate, but I think I'm going to use three of them to impale and do a lot of piercing damage to this one thing. This very unfortunate thing. Eight damage. If that's its HP bar, and I think it is, yipes. <laughs> well, um, that's almost my turn. Maybe, should I move? Kind of stuck back here now, but maybe that's helpful. Maybe I can't get flanked myself now. 
This is good. I it's on purpose. Meant to do it. Uh oh. You stole my move. That's my thing. Oh boy. How? I'm feeling a little outmatched. Hey. Well now I'm stuck. It's not a good spot to be in. But what if? What if... I summoned a cannon that says it hates you. <laughs> I like my little cannon. I don't like being stuck here, but I like my cannon. Um, I can't do anything. I think I'll stay here. Maybe I'll actually turn to face this other one who hasn't attacked me yet. Just so I'm not getting backstabbed by them twice. Well, um, that's me. Gun, though, still has opinions. Cannon! Shoot the shadow! Thank you. So, I'm just kind of checking our bars here to understand. We've got... Armor, which mine is mostly worn through now. Magic barrier, which I have none of. And then our health. So, the little white silver bar is our armor. The little sort of purple one, pink purple, is our health. And blue, if you got it, is a magic barrier. And they have that too. Rough. Ow. Ow. No! Cannon! Stop blocking me in. Rude. Fine, I'm gonna lacerate. Are you bleeding? You're hemorrhaging. I'll take that. It's better than nothing anyway. And I can do it multiple times. Why not? How do you like that, huh? Gun, help. All this work and we've only almost taken out one. I think I might be in trouble. I have chosen some poor positioning today. You can use a health potion to recover HP. That's neat. Um, I mean, assuming you have one. Do I have one? Just perusing the inventory here, I don't really feel like I do. I have a gift from Dad. A resurrect spell, which, neat, and I'll need it pretty soon. And 11 silver which is soon going to be these ghosts. Hey, I got one of them. That feels good, at least. This ghost is going to get 11 silver, though. And a gift from Dad. Um, wait, no. I can still attack. And move! I can move now! Huzzah! Maybe if I... I'll attack first. And then run! Away! Gun, defend me. Actually, hang on. Hang on, hang on. Turn to face that way, just in case. They can keep up. Now in turn. Gun, do something. Use your other skill. Um, Goliath charge. Fire an unstoppable charge that damages everything in its path. Oh, cool. So if it had, like, multiple enemies here, I bet it would hit all of them. It doesn't, though, so I feel like this... Yeah, I feel like this has a chance to do more damage, the Turnium Barrage. Let's do that. We're doing kind of okay. They got a lot of movement. Uh oh. The air thickens, oppressive, as if the shadows themselves lean in closer. A presence stirs, not in sound, but in the very fabric of your thoughts, weaving itself through the cracks of your mind. It feels as though the darkness speaks without words, thoughts without a voice, a dream half remembered. The flames of this world are fed by secrets and lies, ignited by those who play with time as if it were a puppet. Thevir, a chronomancer, a master of illusions, hiding his true face behind layers of shifting shadows. Betrayal is not a choice for him. It is woven into his very being, as natural as the breath he takes. The pressure builds within, 
a throbbing ache that pulses from the depths of your mind, as if something stirs from within you. It burns, not with heat, but with the searing intensity of a dream that slips through your grasp. The sensation crawls across your skin, like fire that isn't there, yet every word spoken seems to ignite deeper, resonating in the marrow of your bones, impossible to extinguish. The flames that threaten this world are not what they seem. Together, we could smother them before they consume all. Misled, you wander in darkness, hero. The ruin that plagues your kind is not of my making, but of another's design. In the Isles of Shadow, the truth festers, waiting to be uncovered. Tyr Otho's desires will see... I hope I said that right. Will see this world reduced to cinders if left unchallenged. That does look cool. You awaken from the nightmare, only to find yourself in another. Tossed from your ship and ensnared in some sort of spherical prison, you're caught in a wild dance amidst the ocean's roaring waves, like a feather in a gale. As the air within the confinement diminishes, your consciousness becomes lost to the grip of suffocation. Bad boat trip. Although this doesn't seem so bad. This I quite like. So, um, hello. A sculpture in the image of Veglianir, the fallen Pegasus. Its plaque reads, in memory of the exalted steed Veglianir. May his soul find safe passage into Elysium. Sorry, some of the text is very small, by the way. Uh, on some of y'all's screens, I'm sure that's a little challenging. You can boost the font of, like, dialogue, text, and such. Not all of the, uh text can be increased in size, though. Which, if that's a feature that they could add in, I imagine that would be very welcome for lots of folks. So hopefully they will. Oh, hello. You open your eyes to find yourself standing amidst a camp of pilgrims going about their rituals. You try to recall how you got here, but your memories are a blur. You should seek out your fellow guildmates, Asuka and Lucette, to learn more about what transpired. Saying a lot of names wrong, I bet. Oh well. Um, Elder Mora, hi. Use your journal to track your adventures at right. Yes, but sorry, you, hi. The old woman stands crooked, sustaining her posture with an ebonoric... Ebonoric? That's probably, yeah, ebonoric scepter. At first glance, she appears fragile and infirm, but as you make your approach, begins to disclose the expression of a resolute young adventurer. The elder's gilt robes, exceptional amongst the haggard umber rags that convey about the campsite, denote a position of prestige and authority within the sect. This does not come as a surprise. In opposition to her gaunt physical presence, she possesses a spirit emanating the zeal of the founders themselves. She speaks to greet you with a rough but firm voice. Greetings, hero. We are honored to have your company as we embark on our voyage. Um, where am I? You find yourself at the campsite of Ogier's... We're going with that? Ogier's emissaries, bound for the Mistshade Isles to honor the fallen Veglianir. We shall gather at his remains and pray for Ogier's sanctuary for no one knows of the consequence that befell him when his beloved equine was ripped from the sky that day. Um, cool. Uh, who, who are you? My name's Mora, elder of Ogier's emissaries. Who, 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 these names you're saying, who? Oh, but you wouldn't wish to endure such a lengthy tale, would you, child? I do have a lot to do, actually. Um, maybe another time. This can be, if the game's looking good to you and you're wanting to check it out, this can be a thing for you to discover for yourself. Uh, ask for healing? My health is white right now. Mora, is that bad? Am I dying? These weary bones don't muster magic as well these days, but a simple recovery spell should still be well within my ability. Should your party require healing at any time, please feel free to approach me. Your party's fully healed. Oh, good. I needed that. I'm good. Thanks. Good tidings to you, hero. Um. Hello. If everyone planted carrots instead of fighting, the world would be a much better place, don't you think? Probably. Yes, sure. Oh, hello there. You must be one of those heroes, right? Everyone was so worried when we found you almost passed out. Thank the stars you're alright. Um. Do you have anything for someone feeling seasick? I remember when I first got here, didn't feel good for days, but they say a little water and lemon does wonders, so maybe that'll help you too? We don't have much, but here, take this. I hope it makes you feel better, all right? Well, thank you. Bye-bye, mister. So, um... 
Boots. Boots the dog. You're important. Sniff, sniff. Woof, woof, says Boots. <laughs> yes or no? I agree, Boots. You pet Boots. Woof, woof. Good conversation. Uh, Brother Guyan, hello. The man stood tall with impeccable posture and unwavering confidence, stirring in you mild feelings of insecurity. Though dressed unassumingly, his weathered, battle-scarred hands silently divulged his seasoned history on the battlefield. His open demeanor among his fellow pilgrims makes him seem unguarded, but you gradually discern that his gaze has been fixated on you from the very moment you began approaching him. The man calls out to you with a booming voice. Greetings, my name's Guyan. Welcome to our camp, adventurer. You and your friend really had us worried. We found you barely conscious in the jungle. Another moment you'd have been Rexite dinner. Now then, uh, what can I do for you? Um... What's a Rexite? Ah, Rexites. Nasty little buggers, aren't they? The small ones won't hesitate to rip your arm off, but the big ones? You best hope you never see one. The whole jungle's crawling with them. Bloodthirsty beasts have us pinned down good. Um... I'm a rogue. I don't feel like I'm volunteering payment to folks that quickly. I need it for engineering. So, bye. So I'm guessing you'll be headed back out there soon, eh? Three of our own, Hans, Mayak, and Gura, left a couple of days ago to find a way to Gladeheim, the nearest town. But I'm worried. We haven't heard a word from them since. Maybe they run into a bit of trouble and just need a hand getting free. If you've got a moment, would you mind searching the jungle for them? I'll keep an eye out. Thank you kindly. You got it. I can talk to the chickens. Cluck, cluck. I can. I don't know why I expected them to talk back. What's cooking? You approach the long-haired pilgrim and notice him preparing ingredients in a practiced rhythm. Chopping carrots, potatoes, meat, among other things, and adding them into a large stewing cauldron. The aroma exuded from within was not particularly fragrant, but unique in such a way that it piqued the curiosity of your palate. Greetings, traveler. It's good to see a friendly face. What can I do for you today? Um... What's cooking? Got a stew brewing. Pepper bells, some fish, onions. Warms the belly and stretches the supplies nicely. Gotta make every bit count in times like these. We scrape by on what we can find. Plants, fruits, whatever the land offers. Used to fish by the shore, but that path's gotten too dangerous lately. Uh, why is the path to shore treacherous? Those wreck sites, little buggers. They're deadly. But if you can take one down, the meat's worth the risk. Cooks up nice with a good sauce. Well, stay safe. Take care out there, traveler. I will. Ooh, I can use. So th there's also, like, cooking and other kinds of things that you can do if you have ingredients, which I have... Lemonade's probably not a good addition to the current stew. If I had to get... I'm not a, like... I'm not a great chef or a chef at all, but... I think I'll keep it for me. Uh, ah! Who's eight? There you are. It's a relief to see you up and standing. I'd rather not endure this journey without capable company by my side. We escaped by the skin of our teeth. If not for these pilgrims finding us on the beach, I fear we wouldn't be speaking now. Uh... What did happen to the ship? And my memory's hazy at best. You were below when the storm struck, tearing our ship apart. I recall the roar of splintering wood and the blackness of the ocean, and then nothing until waking up here with you and Asuka. We're undoubtedly on Respite Island, the nearest haven from our last known position. These pilgrims have extended us a kindness, but we mustn't overstay. The mission remains before us. Lead on, Endia. I'll guard you back. We can still see this through, and perhaps we'll find our missing allies as we go. That'll be good. Um, your party's shown on the left side with their respective stats and status effects. Welcome to the party. Click a portrait to switch to control that character. And, um... Uh, as you approach the girl slumped on the bench, you notice her hunched over, clearly unwell, retching into a bucket. It's Asuka, your companion from the Heroes Guild. She was with you on the ship, but the unsettling question gnaws at you. How did either of you end up here? Ugh, hey, India. Look at me, sitting here like a beached fish. Not my finest hour, huh? It's quite fascinating, really. I must have gulped down enough salt water to keep a sea monster hydrated. Not my best decision. Boy, am I glad to see you. That storm really tossed us around, didn't it? 
Thought we were all going to end up lost at sea. Um, you uh, feeling ready to get back up? I'm almost there. Just need another moment to shake off this watery mess. But don't worry, I'll be right behind you. Talent acquired, Wild Heart. While Aska is in the, your party, you can speak with and understand the animals of the world. Many often have valuable information, items, or even quests to share. Looks like I need to say hi to a chicken again. Give me a quest. The matriarch's cooking is simply extraordinary. Thanks, chicken. This is a good skill you have. Ellie, I don't want to talk to you. I'm talking to your chickens. Do you mind? No. Hey, would you like to try feeding the chickens? Don't worry, they won't bite. Just a bit peckish, that's all. It's a pretty good joke. Um, I, I'm trying to... Excuse me, I was having a conversation with chickens. If I may. Gluttony is a sin, yes. Yet who am I to fault those ensnared by the allure of this corn? And now, Boots. Sorry, I don't. I wasn't listening very well earlier. <laughs> New friend? I, I check. Good friend, yes. Uh. I'd love to know what you. Why you think they call you Boots? Master says Boots eats Boots, but no, no, Boots just nibble. Little nibble. Okay, okay. Boots eat boots. Boots love boots. You got boots? Um. How are you doing? Good. No. Great. Wait. No. Bad? No. Good. No. Wait. Boots sad. Boots sad. Ball broken. No more fun. Boots miss ball. Master gave ball so boots chew ball. Not boots. But now, ball broken. Like all boots, boots bite. But ball? Boots love ball. Long shacks throw ball. Boots always get. Boots always bring back. Best at it. How can I help with that? Boots. Fix for boots? Hans, Boots' friend, always fix. Boots chew. Hans fix. Always. Maybe new friend fix for Boots? Uh, leave it to me. This is more important than the other quests anyone else gave me. Yes, yes, new friend help Boots. Boots help friend. Here, take ball. Fix ball. Is it fixed? Please fix for Boots. Uh, I'll see what I can do. Bye, friend. Come back, friend. Good smells. We'll find you. I like boots. We should probably go. Unless. Chicken? Any final thoughts? No? Okay. I'm going to go. If I can. Oh, here we go. Travel. And here's Respite Island. The world map lets you fast travel to different waypoints. So. Uh, you can see the waypoints here, which is nice. Pilgrim Camp, which is where we currently are or were. We could also go to the Sunlit Woodlands. We're off. And here we are. So. Quite lovely. Let's just start looking around. Hey, birds. Hello. A lemur sits atop a deactivated clay golem. It notices you, but doesn't seem overly concerned with your presence. I am way more engaged in the possibility of talking with animals and getting quests from them than I am with any human, now that I have been given this ability. Greetings, human. Who are you? I am Mimo, and as you can see, I am very high up. Greetings, human. Um, what are you doing all the way up there? I am looking for a thing of great importance to my family that has been taken away. Climbing up high on this dead rock person will help me see further. Uh, don't you, don't you mean a golem? No, that's a silly name and doesn't mean anything. Humans are so unclever, I bet they'll never get past my intelligence quiz. <laughs> Go on. Can I try taking that quiz? Sure, human, but don't blame me if your feelings get hurt. Just let me know when you're ready. Oh, okay, I'm... Yes, I, I would love to take your intelligence quiz. Greetings, human. I am ready for that um, intelligence quiz now. Good. A brave human. Unclever, but brave. Let's begin. Question one. What has one eye but cannot see? Uh, needle? Pirate? Close, but no. A beholder? Definitely not. Try again. Simple, a needle. Impressive. For a human, that is. Question two. What is yours, but is used more often by other people? Name, probably. Advice. 
Um, taxi? That, what? No, um... A wrong answer could be funny, though. What? Are you just making up random words now? Final question. What can make any wish come true? The hard work and determination, dreams, a genie trapped in a lamp, or seven dragon balls. I'm, um... Well, I know genies have some limitations. And I don't know where we're going to find any of these. The hard work and determination? How naive, human. Not everything can be achieved simply by believing in it. Hmm. As expected, you failed horribly, human. I had a nice reward to give you if you passed, but looks like I'm keeping it to myself. Bye-bye now, silly human. Bye-bye. Nice to meet you. Well. Adventure calls. And barring that, I'm sure we can find some other animal to bother. Wait. Don't know if we should bother this one. The creature's hasty retreat leaves behind the unsettling scene. A half-eaten arm discarded in the undergrowth. A grim reminder of what stalks these wilds. The air still feels heavy with its presence. A quiet warning that this jungle holds more than it shows. Best to stay sharp. It's likely not the last time you'll cross paths with something hungry. Whatever that creature was, it clearly has no qualms about preying on humans. So it seems, um... A large beehive hangs from the tree. You could probably find some honey in it, if you're brave enough. Maybe we can convince the bees... with the power of conversation. Poison essence. Something wrong with these bees. Do not inhale. I mean, I'll take it, but... Messed up, bees. A deep, foreboding hole in the earth. Its bottom lost to darkness. The faint murmur of distant voices rises from within. Oh, um... Hello? Exam... Can I examine? Well... Hmm. I think that does the same thing as the pop-up. Well, there's voices down there. That seems important. Um... Whomever this arm belonged to could have probably used a hand against the creature you just saw. Is now the time, tooltip. Uh, hang on, what was that? A crumbling elven altar, its surface marked with grooves that once held offerings. Like a sapphire. My, my. And some silver. And an old, damp letter with a plea. Hmm... Loot it, I guess. I just mostly want to read it. Let's leave the other stuff for a second. Hang on. Um, read. Ooh, that's quite a lot. Undine, blessed goddess of the waters, I call to you in our time of greatest need. The banners of blue and the gold sun advance, leaving death in their wake, and our people are broken. The rivers, once pure, now carry the blood of the fallen, and I fear we are going to have to speed this up. I lay before you this sapphire, blue as the waters that cradle our lives. Accept it as a humble offering, a symbol of my devotion and my plea. We have nothing else to give but our hope and our prayers. Save us, Undine, for without you, all that we know will wither and die. wonder if that's who this belonged to. I was going to take the sapphire, but now I feel like maybe that seems rude. Stealing is wrong, as every rogue knows. What's this now? The remains of an elven temple, which seems it might be over a century old. Hmm. Oh my. Fight? Well, combat begin, but now we have a party of three. That's nice. What sort of things can you do? You've got... Sheath in wind. Grant your weapon additional air damage for three turns. Nice, like that. Invoke lightning. Strike an enemy with lightning bolts. Storm cloud. Conjure a static cloud to shock an enemy for multiple turns. Uh, attack an enemy with a powerful blow to disarm their weapon. And parry. Enter a stance that deflects the next melee attack. Cool. Okay. Well, seems like you should be getting up in the thick of it. Pretty quick, like. Definitely. 
buff up the weapon a bit. Can you reach anything with lightning? You can. Awesome. Beautiful. These look like something to not stand in, and I'm not going to. So, uh, okay. Sit tight. Stay back. This, I think, calls for a gear work cannon right about here. Yeah. I like this decision. Flank, impale, hmm. And we can see the turn order up here, which is nice. Gun will go next, and then these two. How much health do the bees have? That's a lot of health for a bee. They have more health than I do. These are some bees. Goodness. I was going to get up in their face, but now I'm thinking maybe I'll stand back here. I'm good. And I'll like face this direction and all, but this, this is fine, thanks. Gun says, I'm firing this way. Yeah. I like my ability to summon this thing. Uh oh. They have more movement than I, uh oh, than I expected them to have. All right, so what can you do then? You've got. Uh, you can launch a rock projectile at targets. You can heal. Conjure thorned vines to damage and poison two enemies. You may target the same enemy more than once. That's cool, too. Uh, restore a party member's armor. That's also awesome. Place a hunter's trap on a nearby tile or damage and knock an enemy away from you. But you don't have a bow, so you can't do that one. Okay. Noted. We do have two enemies probably within reach. Let's poison both of them. Poisoned. Poisoned. Beautiful. And you still got two action points. So you could hit something with a rock. Or deploy a trap. Let's hit something with a rock. Oh, you can only do it like in these directions. So that's okay. This counts. Oh, there's something in the way. Me. I'm in the way. That's fine. Uh, never mind that. Uh, cancel that move. Cancel this order. Let's move here. And then throw a rock this way. Bonk. And then... Standing further back might be a pretty good idea. Face this way. All right. I've got one more movement. Why not? Perfect. Now you. Maybe come help me out here. This looks like it could get messy. Or stop these two from getting up in my face. That could also be nice. Yeah, come be a distraction down here. Your sword is powered up. So do two slash, uh, do a slash here, do a, yeah, okay. Yeah, let's just do a regular hit and see how that does. Yeah, it's okay. And then what about a storm cloud though? Kazap. Nice, and it's shocked now. Cool, okay. Um. Yeah, let's actually do get into a defensive stance. And end's turn. Yeah. There we go. Poison resisted by magic barrier. Good. Now you're poisoned, though. Not ideal. They got ranged attacks, too. 
These things are mean. All right, let's get behind some things and do very big attacks to them. Okay, bypasses armor. Good, because it still has a lot of armor. Yeah, let's do this. Very backstab. Very nice. And yet it still has so much health. It's the worst. I could... No, nah, it's fine. Let's, let's stack damage on this thing. Yeah. Pretty good. And then I... Ugh. Yeah, facing this way is fine. They can get behind me no matter where. <laughs> no matter where they are. So, sure. Gun. Let's work on this one. Almost got it. Yay! All right. One's down. Thank goodness. And that one's poisoned. Good, good. Ow. Ow. Okay. You could restore my armor, and that might be a great thing to be doing. Um... Let's get you here. Can you reach me to do that? Yeah! Nice! And... Yeah, throw a rock. Whittling it down. Okay. And you, already poisoned. I need you to start distracting this thing, please. Before it comes after one of us squishier ones. Disarm their weapon. I mean, I, I don't think they have a weapon. <laughs> so maybe just hit them a couple times. Do you still have that sheathed in wind buff going, or is that, has that ended? I think it's ended. Let's use that again. There we go. Oh, I don't think I properly used it last time. My bad. Okay. I get it. And that's it for that turn. Okay. Okay. Ow. Ow. He kind of is getting messed up by these two. Maybe I shouldn't be uh, spreading myself out so much. Stay grouped up a bit more, you know? Can't get behind this one. Which is kind of okay. Can still hit it. So close. Gun, can you reach anything? Ah, oh, they're all out of your line of sight. Bummer. Okay. Hey, the poison worked, thank goodness. We need some healing, quick-like. There we go. That helped. And, you know, why not? Let's place a trap right... Here. They're kind of floating. I don't know if they can actually, like, get hit by it, but... I'm curious. Okay. Yeah, you come up here. Zap with some lightning. Beautiful. That thing is very near dead. And... Yeah, sit tight. Ow. 
Ouch. Still ouch. This armor's not doing nearly enough to help you right now. Okay. I can get around... I can get behind this one to finish it off. Let's do. There we go. And then... Do I have any... That does restore some health. I don't think it's necessarily the... solution for our current problem. Maybe I'll just face this way and sit tight. Gun can't reach right now. That's fine. If I had taken the ability that allowed me to move stuff around, that probably would have been the ideal tool for, like, repositioning gun around the field each turn. Let's try to keep this one alive. We really need to if we can. Oh, you don't have, like, you used your healing move. Right. Okay, let's instead... Try to very quickly destroy B. I uh, can't with that, but this we can, I think. Oof, boy, it has so much health. Oh no. One of your party members has died. You can use a resurrection scroll to revive fallen party members. That's good. The secret is out. I'm not especially good at this genre of game, even though they are quite fun. <laughs> Backstabs. The B. One more time. There we go. The battle's chaos dissipates, leaving only the uneasy silence of the jungle. You absently check your arms, half expecting to find the venomous sting of those twisted blight wings. Your gaze drifts over the scene, the jungle floor a canvas of carnage. Bodies, already claimed by death before you arrived, lie mutilated and half devoured. Blood pools around shattered crates and overturned carts, a testament to the savagery that befell those unfortunate souls. Among the carnage, something catches your eye. Deep blue fabric, stained with gore, yet unmistakable in its hue. Upon closer inspection, you see it. The golden sun emblazoned on the cloth. The proud sigil of House Mazan. Looks like we were luckier than these soldiers. It's almost like they didn't even get the chance to fight back. To separate a party member, drag their portrait away from the group. Oh, that's cool. Um, we should revive this one, maybe. Use select revive position. That's fine. Yeah, here. Here's fine. Welcome back. You owe me a scroll. Blight wings stinger. Do not consume. Good advice. Thread. Yeah, let's loot the place. All the goods from our hard work. And also, let's just search the area. Lemon, shovel, rod of bubbles. Ooh. Sure. Uh, thread, bronze pickaxe, sugar. Don't stand in the poison. What are you doing? A sharp arrow. Silver. To my loving husband. A hastily scribbled note found on the corpse of a soldier. And rod of gloom. Hmm. Stop standing in the poison. Or acid, or whatever it is. Can't be good for you or your shoes. A bloodied corpse. The tag on its plate reads Mark. Uh, a pirate scimitar protrudes from his side. Ah. Scroll of Invoke Rainfall and Silver. And Coal Empty Potion Bottle. should probably report back to someone with this information. 
You know, let's do that. I, I like, yeah, I should definitely be wrapping this video up anyway. So maybe I wonder if uh, the stuff we have found will be of any use to the people back there. To my loving husband, love, the days are quiet without you. Elise asks every morning when you'll be home and I tell her soon. She's made a picture for you. Her way of holding on, I suppose. Come home when you can, love. This house is empty without your daughter. Tough break. So if I pull open the map, we should be able to... Quick travel. Oh, we can only do it from a waypoint. Okay, well, that's not too far from here. Let's hike back. Get in the get in, get in the party, nerd. Come on. Our journal might actually... Yeah, let's see. So, like, of the quests we had that we'd pull together, uh, investigate the meaning behind the dream and uncover any connections to the real world. That might take a while. Uh, find a route to Gladeheim, the main port town on the island. Seek out Brother Hans, Pilgrim Mayak, and Pilgrim Gerha. Haven't pulled that off, nor have we managed to... Oh, if we find a sticky material and someone's skilled at crafting, we could put the broken ball back together. We've not really achieved any of our goals for the people, but I do wonder if any of them will have anything to say about our discoveries. Does anyone? I feel like if anyone does, you might. Greetings, hero. We're honored to have your company as we embark on our voyage. Eh, maybe not. I'm sure this information is useful to someone, though it might not be for any of the people here, necessarily. Now then, what can I do for you? Nope. I haven't talked to you yet. Sorcerer Kareth. The man in white robes stood out from the pilgrims in the camp who were dressed in drably colored rags. You peg him as a sorcerer of sorts, as everything about his appearance screamed magic, from his pointy conical to the time-worn scriptures on his back, along with an exquisitely manufactured rod. You get the sense that he's been eyeing your every move since you woke up. However, he seems to be staring in another direction each time you turn to face him. Why, hello there, adventurer. Um... Could use a sorcerer. Could have used a sorcerer, honestly, like ten minutes ago. Care to join? Unfortunately, I don't think that's a good idea. The coast is teeming with guards on alert and pirates on the hunt. I much prefer the inconspicuousness of my fellow pilgrims, since you seem to be the sort that attracts more attention than necessary. Can't argue with that. No offense to you, of course, adventurer. No, no, that you've made the right call. See you around, adventurer. Yeah. But yeah, you get the idea. That is Guild Saga. I hope you have enjoyed. Again, there's a link down in the description if you want to go pick up this game for yourself. And if you do so, I do hope you enjoy as well. Thank you very much to the folks at Ocelot for sponsoring this video. And yeah, I'll see you tomorrow for something else. Take care, everyone, and goodbye.